Have you always wanted to make these Mama Made Minis dinosaurs? We did too. They're just so cute. Join us as we talk about our top tips and pitfalls in this fun pattern. Did we bite off more than we could chew? Well, I think we did more than just a little bit. We dino bit more than we could chew. We sure did. <laughs> Back when we decided we were gonna film this video, we said, hey, we're gonna make like eight. We're gonna show one of every different kind that we could come up with. Right. And uh, the, these two are what we have to show for those lofty <laughs> goals. It feels a little bit ridiculous. But we do have two completed dinos. We do have two. <laughs> At least there's two. And you know, we've got three more half-made ones, and I actually have a fourth half-made one at my house, but I lost it while I was uh, working on making stuff for this video. So it's in some bag halfway. It's made to this point. It's a really fun pattern. I like it a lot, but there's just so many pieces to it that all of a sudden it becomes a, uh, a chore almost. Right, right. It's the cutest little pattern. I love his spikes. I love the colors that we that I selected for this one and that you selected on this one. I think that they're super duper cute. But the pitfall for me and the struggle was real. You know, I've had a few outings that I've had to go to and so I've had to take like a little travel bag and you know, I'm not used to crocheting with plush yarn. It's expanded from <laughs> the yarns I'm used to so like okay you can't just take a small little bag so then it's like how many yarns like I had three different colors for the spikes and one for the body mm -hmm. so taking projects on the go it was a lot harder for me to do that because it just was so much it takes yeah. up so much space and then if you want to stuff your project too you right? have to take stuffing right and then you've got like this giant bag of stuffing and all these giant right. stains of yarn and you're like Carrying the tote bag that's three feet tall. Mm -hmm. So is, now crocheting after what four months of doing plush yarns, we're starting to discover the portability is a little trickier mm -hmm. and finishing the projects on the road is a little harder. So I think there are just some challenges that we weren't quite expecting, but definitely it's a super duper cute pattern. Yeah. And can you talk about the yarn that you used in your crochet hook? Yeah, so I used the Michaels Loops and Threads Sweet Snuggles Light. I used the Tranquil Dot colorway, which is a medium blue, and there's a light blue and a green fleck in it. And then I used six or six and a six and a half millimeter hook because this it calls for a seven and an eight. Mm -hmm. But this yarn is so much thinner that I didn't think it would turn out cute if I used a bigger hook. Uh, I also used the Parfait Chunky sea glass, sea glass yeah. for the spikes. Uh, and it doesn't quite exactly match the green, but I think it's really cute. It's still a nice accent color. I, I think it's perfect that it doesn't actually match because mm -hmm. yeah. they stand out then. Mm -hmm. And she did a really great job just embroidering basic, simple, eyes. You yeah. used a cotton thread yep. to and embroider those eyes. Honestly, I like how these ones turned out with a little bit of a white in it, so I might just add that to this guy. I think it would give him a little more character. Yeah, it gives it a little more depth. And we actually made a separate video. It's a short video on crocheting up the eyes on these guys so that you could see mm -hmm. how we did it. And we're by no means expert. I think it just takes that being brave. Right. Right? Because <laughs> you do have to tear them out sometimes. Right. And it can be tricky. Like, I actually did take one of these out while I was doing it. and While we to, were recording the video. Yeah, while we were. And you have to be really careful because some of mm -hmm. these yarns just fall apart when you start messing with them too much. And I was a little bit scared I was going to get some bare spots. But right. I still, it tur did turn out okay still. So that was... <laughs> right. So yours turned out much smaller because yes. of your yarn selection yeah, and your hook size. Now, I use the Premier Basic Chenille yarn in sea foam, and I use the hook size that the pattern called for. So the head is made with the smaller the seven, the seven mm -hmm. yep. and then the body's made with the eight, and then the body's not stuffed. Um, I did put stuffing in my tail. Yep, I did too. So because I wanted it to stand out and for my spikes to be, I think the pattern calls for that yep. too. There's a lot of sewing to do on this pattern, which is probably one of the reasons we don't love it as much because I have never been one of those people that enjoys seaming things, even when I, 
before I started doing amigurumi, I was like, the less, the less I have to do after I've crocheted it, the better. Right. So, uh, I think for me, I do, I still really liked making this, even though you're sewing on the tail, the arms, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight spikes. I mean, it's not the worst, but it's also not just done. It was one of the reasons why I struggled to finish mine even to get one finished because I really don't like sewing. It's the most adorable pattern. I love it. I mean, I think that's the reason why people make them. Plus, mm -hmm. kids love them. I recommend it, but just, just be forewarned. Yeah. Be true to yourself. If you hate <laughs> sewing body parts on if you're always looking for no sew or low sew patterns just be forewarned that this might be a challenging pattern for you to finish right you might like if you want to try to broaden your high horizons and get maybe a little bit better at doing mm -hmm. sewn patterns this is probably a good one to practice on the couple places you need to watch for if you're not good at evenly sewing things on like i'm not very good at that um, my spikes are not quite even. <laughs> They're a little bit off center and my arms are well, a little bit off center. You but know, you know. <laughs> no one knows that because if depending on how you even hold it, they might not look on center. Right. And and I think it's tricky because there's varying there's two sizes for the spikes. So I think that that's tricky too, but I don't think I mean it's more fluid. It's a fluid pattern, so right. you really like no one's gonna no one's going right. to Unless you're going it. to the fair <laughs> right. and you've got judges literally right. judging your work. That's the only person who's really going to judge your work. And these are going to be played with, you know, right. so there's, and, and you know what? No one's perfect. No one is perfect and no loveys are really perfect either. And right. I, that's one of the things that I wanted to um, emphasize is that if you're feeling like you have challenges or your arms don't quite look like they're on the right spot or your head's not quite straight ahead or, you know, if you feel the like you have challenges in right. making loveys. <laughs> if you're feeling like it's not perfect, keep going anyway. Although... <laughs> There's one dino that I stopped, and this is where I, I do want to say, and I'll show you a close-up of this dino's head, because I made this out of the Premier Parfait Chunky Yarn, and I didn't size down my hook, and honestly, I didn't know I needed to. This is probably the second lovey I ever made, so I'd started this one way back when we were first starting about making these dinosaurs. And I didn't realize once I stuffed the head that I would be able to see all of the, the fiber stitches, belt. Yeah. And, and then I'm like, oh, it'll be fine. I'll just keep going. I'll just like squish it down. It'll be <laughs> fine. So I kept going on this one and I'm like, oh, I'm so disappointed. I'm so disappointed. And then I just decided... I can't finish this because there's no way I feel good about giving it away or selling it, although I'm so sure some child will love it anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, put cute eyes on it and finish it up. But I was very disappointed. Learn as you go and situations. You know, leave a comment if that's something you struggle with because if you're new to using plush yarn, and I didn't start crocheting with plush yarn until January of this year, so it's only been a few months, I did not know that it was very important to make sure your stitches are really tight. Right. I just didn't know. Now, now I do. Right. And you hear about so many of these yarns if you're watching YouTube videos and you don't really realize until you have it in hand that Parfait Chunky is not anywhere near the same size as Brene Blanket. Premier and it says it's a size basic six. Meal. Right. It says it's a size but six. But it's really thin. It's so thin. Yeah. It really, I feel like there needs to be a there's a yarn weight system, which I'm pretty sure most people who've been crocheting a while know about. Mm -hmm. But I feel like they need to come out with one specifically for plush yarns because the variance in sizing, even if it's all a six, is insane. Right. It's... I agree. It's insane. Right. Hey, we should talk about this guy because yeah. this guy is really cool. This is our massively giant dinosaur who's in progress. He is our softest and plushiest giant yes. guy. We purchased the Juicy Couture XL Velour yarn and we started taking apart the right. yarn because it is actually double stranded, which means it is literally like this when you buy it. And it right. is so 
thick. Very thick. And there, you only get 47 yards in a skein, so it doesn't go very far if you're using it as it comes. And it's expensive. It's really expensive. It's mm -hmm. like $12 if you don't have a sale or coupon. Like how many, if you crocheted this dinosaur without unraveling the yarn, how many balls <laughs> you would of yarn get, would you need? If you were to make this guy with just the, the yarn as, as you purchase it, you would probably need four to five skeins, and he would be twice as big as this because it's so much thicker. I think I used it a number nine or ten. I think it was, it was a, nine. a nine, yeah. On the head, we were sizing up one on the hook sizes for the pattern. Yeah. And I love I love the head on this one because of the eyes that we put on this yeah. guy. He's got the really giant no, holographic, holographic green eyes and I think he's going to look so pretty when we're all done. But we couldn't get him completed by the time we filmed because we ran out of yarn. <laughs> yeah. I do you have another skein in my basement? So okay. we just have to take the time to take it apart. And our time has yep. not been on our side That's lately. That's <laughs> true. Because we had too many videos in a row that all were very big time commitments. And mm -hmm. we have bitten off. I think we've mentioned that in every video, the last two or three, <laughs> that we've bitten off more than we could chew. But we're doing our best. And, you know, I think that it's important that we're honest with people, you can see we're real human beings <laughs> on this side too, and that we we really want to help our audience mm -hmm. um, be successful in their crocheting, but also we can't sugarcoat. You know, these plushies take a little bit more time than some of the other items that we have been crocheting and right. the things that we want to take to market. And and honestly, to prepare to go to um, farmers markets this summer and a couple other markets that we're looking at. We have to spend a lot of our time crocheting smaller items because right. we're going to sell a lot more smaller items mm -hmm. than larger. And now I can see why they're priced in that upper tier is right. because they take so much more time. And a lot of people are willing to pay it, but not always at a farmer's market. Right. It just depends on where you're going to sell your goods. Uh -huh. There's one more thing about this guy before we move on. And that is that this guy was made with a blankie mod. So he wasn't going to have the legs like these other guys were. Um, this one crochets out a little wider and then comes down and goes down here. I'm going to try to deconstruct this yarn. It's much looser, so I think I'll be successful taking this apart. But I just decided I'm abandoning ship on this one because I don't feel good about the stitches with the head. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to try to salvage as much of the yarn off of this as I can. Um, but I was trying to make this as a blankie yeah. instead. And I do think it, it's kind of fun to have various options. Molly Made Minis offers this mod as a paid like pattern upgrade. So we'll put the link to that in the comments mm -hmm. um, so that you can find it more easily. Yep. And then the other dino that we brought, the th reason that I really like the Mama Made Minis Lovies is because you make your head and the head shapes are different for the different mm -hmm. animals, which I think is nice because sometimes the um, in the amigurumi world, all the heads are round and then you put on different ears if it's a cat or a dog or a rabbit, you know. And so I love how the heads have different shapes. Yes. Makes them very realistic. And then... Your construction goes from the top, which attaches right here. You don't have to sew it on and works its way down. And so we had some viewers ask about how to do this leg construction. And I think that it's very nice that you can do it with hardly any sewing. Yeah, right? I, I, I honestly love this. Mm -hmm. Once I figured out laying it flat yep. and making sure that it's not skewed because then it's slightly... Right. It's a little bit weird, but I mean, weird is fine. <laughs> so you, when you, when you, when you're actually putting the legs on, this is where you're actually straightening out the mm -hmm. body, because up until that point, it's just all attached. Right, and you have to keep in mind if you start your um, body at the side, it's not always going to line up at the side anymore by the time you're mm -hmm. done. So usually, mine is almost at the center of the body, and I don't have to do very much to. Uh, to get it started. And sometimes I have to make several stitches to get where I need to be to get this next part started. But if you if you do a really good job of laying this out nice and flat and finding your center, 
then you can just keep crocheting in the round. Yep. And once you finish this leg, you just pop over here and you attach and you just keep crocheting in right. the round. And you can't forget to make a long enough tail to sew your little, your hole together yeah. because I have right. done that a few times. I think I did that too where I cut, I accidentally cut the Oops. wrong thread, but then I just took a new thread and yeah, sewed it together. It's much more convenient if you keep it long though. Right. So this guy's still in the process and he didn't get completed intentionally so that we could share a little bit more. Yeah, we're going to overlay a picture right now. I made this exact one with pink spikes back at Christmas time for a friend. So we, we're going to overlay that so you can see how it looks completed. Yeah, and you know, the fun thing I think about the dinosaurs, which is unique to the dinosaurs in the book, which is why I can't say I hate this pattern because there's so much sewing, is that because there are all these different elements that they can look so unique. Right. You know, I couldn't wait to make a dinosaur that had all these different colored spikes. Yeah, and I really want to make a rainbow dinosaur too mm -hmm. and have different, like a rainbow gradient of spikes. And if I make another dinosaur, I want to make his body straight. Because <laughs> I think <laughs> it would be so be, fun. I think that would be really cute. And because I love scrappy Afghans and love putting different colors together, I think it would look amazing. And um, one of the channels that we watched uh, last month, I think it was Yarn and Yarn Lindsay. And Lindsay. She mentioned at Hershner's that they have this brand of yarn, Cheerful Fleece Multi's Yarn. And I ordered two of these because she showed what they looked like. And I just thought that they looked amazing. <laughs> so I thought that these would be really cute making a mama made mini. And I could see using this on the body yeah. of, of a dinosaur and then picking the various colors out of the colorway to put the spikes on. I love that. So we'll we'll leave a link to where you can find these. Um, we aren't affiliated with Hershner's at all, but you might want to try these. And I think when I ordered from Hershner's, I had my yarn in two days. They were like super lightning fast. I bought a bunch of Parfait Chunky yarn from them because they had a deal. And then I threw a couple of these on and they were very, very quick. Maybe someday we'll be able to take you guys up to Hershner's because we live like two and a half hours away from them and it would be a fun road trip. That would be a really <laughs> amazing road trip. We should do that sooner than later. That would be really amazing. Before summer explodes. Right. The softball season. Uh-huh. And you'll be crocheting on the road. A lot. <laughs> If you're interested in learning even more of our tips and tricks in making these mama-made minis loveys, you can watch this video right here.